Hey everybody, Relay here. I just wanted to make a follow up video regarding the NVIDIA DLSS3 versus FSR3 video and the incorrect statements that I made during that video regarding DLSS. But first, I'd like to thank those who pointed it out and corrected me on my wrong info. This caused me to go seek the proper information and uh, any additional knowledge I can kind of get on DLSS so I can better wrap my head around it and hopefully present it to you guys in a way that makes sense. I'd also like to thank the guy who just said mouth noises. Uh, gave me a little laugh and um, maybe I'll try not to eat my mic in the future and see if that helps. You know, I'm uh, starting to feel like Mr. Fantastic from Fallout New Vegas. Uh, for those of you who have played the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He's, uh, of course, uh, a genius. Sometimes I make up little stories in my head about what the numbers mean. And uh, really, really, really smart individual, you know. So getting right to it, the first error that I wanted to mention was when I mentioned the tensor cores are the primary drivers behind the frame generation. And uh, I just want to start by saying DLSS isn't limited to frame generation, but at the time I thought that's what it was. It was frame generation and upscaling. So from my new understanding, DLSS 1 and 2 are both upscaling and DLAA, so anti-aliasing, and um, that's pretty much their primary components. So for those of you who might have seen anti-aliasing in games and were probably wondering um, what it was, anti-aliasing, to put it briefly, is a technique to prevent distortion. Um, you can see it especially in lower resolutions. Um, so pixels are made to be above, under, and side to side. But when you have an object in a game that's like a, got a curve to it or um, some kind of um, not so straight line, like a line that might move diagonally, for example, sometimes these things stick out like a sore thumb, and anti-aliasing is supposed to use a few different methods to prevent that kind of um, jaggedness in the image. Now there's a few different types of anti-aliasing, but uh, we won't get into that because uh, there's a few more things I still need to touch on and I don't want this video to be super long. So now that we understand um, anti-aliasing, we can kind of put together what is DLSS 1 and 2. So DLSS 1, um, the data that was used to upscale is, uh, well, spatial anti-aliasing, which is one type of anti-aliasing, and data from a single frame, the current frame, as well as motion vectors. Now, if you're like me, you might be asking, what is a vector? Um, so basically a vector is like a generalized uh, direction of something. So it's calculating the direction of motion as well as the velocity. And in doing so, it would produce a higher resolution upscaled image. That being said, being that it only used a single frame, it uh, didn't always produce the best results. Needless to say, they improved quite a bit when they released DLSS 2. So DLSS 2 uses something similar to temporal anti-aliasing in a sense that they use multiple frames so prior frames and current frames to generate an image now the way they do this is a bit different where TAA takes every frame's pixel DLSS only takes a select few from different frames and then puts them together to kind of fill in the gaps it also uses data from the low resolution image motion vectors exposure and brightness and uh, depth buffers which basically means uh, the depth of an object from like a certain view and the resulting image is a slightly improved um, has slightly improved details in comparison to DLSS 1. Should be noted as well that um, DLSS 1 and 2 kind of upscale their images a bit differently. So whereas DLSS 1 tried to generate um, new information from lower resolution images, DLSS 2 samples the previous frames and then uses that to generate their upscaled image. Now when we move over to DLSS 3 in comparison, this is where there is a pretty large change and this is where one of my big errors were. So firstly I was under the impression that DLSS 3, the frame generation technology, ran primarily from the tensor cores and I noticed that other cards had very similar amounts of tensor cores and didn't take into consideration the fact that uh, it actually runs off of optical flow accelerators which is hardware uh, in the especially the Ada Lovelace generation cards, so the 4000 series. So while the tensor cores actually help with EA, the AI aspect, so upscaling and uh, super sampling and the creation of the upscaled image, uh, it does not influence anywhere nearly as much uh, the frame generation. So to get a basic understanding of what optical flow accelerators are, we need a basic understanding of what optical flow is. And optical flow is basically, it's basically a pattern of movement that is perceived by you uh, 
between yourself and an object in motion. So that being said, after DLSS is first done using the lower resolution images from current and previous frames, as well as motion vectors and a few other um, determinants, the upscaled images are then analyzed by the optical flow accelerator. It then determines how pixels change between the two frames, and this data is used um, to generate the newer frames. So in a nutshell, um, DLSS 1 and 2 at their release were primarily leveraging the tensor cores to use AI in order to be able to create an upscaled image along with anti-aliasing and a few other factors, whereas DLSS 3 actually creates frame generation using the optical flow accelerators on board and the newer generation of tensor cores for the AI portion, and uh, that is a more accurate picture than I painted in the last video. I was also wrong in saying that DLSS 3 is limited to the 4000 series cards. So more accurately, uh, frame generation is the thing that's limited to the 4000 series cards. And DLSS 3 is a set of features which is available in the prior generations as well um, with their anti-aliasing and uh, just general upgrades in performance. So there have been rumors of people operating um, the frame generation technology on older generation cards or trying to anyways. But um, apparently this is not something that goes really well because the hardware itself from the older optical flow accelerators in the cards don't really function with um, multi-frame generation and so it would just be a bit of a mess trying to get that to work so if you have any comments or questions or anything else please let me know hopefully i uh, hopefully i got most of it kind of right this time and uh, i appreciate uh, people who pointed it out in the last video until next time take her easy